But uh, but yeah, we got uh, and help me pronounce your name one more time. Gio- Giordano Quintavalle. Giordano. So we've got Giordano, Giordano. here. Yeah. Excited to share a uh, an, an experience with us. It uh, sounds like it's going to be an ayahuasca experience here today. It is uh, partially, mostly ayahuasca, I would say. Yeah, absolutely so. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, let me kick it over to you and uh, just give us a little bit of a uh, little bit of background. Help us set the stage on, um, you know, kind of what led you, what, what led you into this experience, how the how the medicine called your name. And um, and then we'll uh, then we'll dive into to the, the meat and potatoes. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, very happy to share. A little bit of background would be uh, mostly my childhood, I would say, um, starting from uh, uh, the death of my father at age 10, uh, quite a uh, traumatic experience. I grew up uh, pretty much exposed to uh, lots of drugs, the streets, I would say. I was unsupervised at very young age, and so I was rolling my joints at age 10. I was pushing my ashish and marijuana around 12. And uh, I got in my peyote and uh, uh, psilocybin mushroom LSD around 15. So that's quite early, quite an exposure. And uh, uh, reasonably shortly after the beginning, I decided to stop for a minute and say, wait a second, is this all there is on this planet? Is this all life is about? And I thought it was... Uh, there should have been another um, answer to that. And so I moved on for 20 years in the entertainment industry. I was a singer, a dancer, uh, organizer, an entertainer altogether without doing anything, any drugs. I stopped everything. And then uh, I found myself uh, at age 33 uh, in New Zealand, living uh, and working happily uh, with the a regular life and a friend of mine a doctor suggested a few of inf- they gave me a few information about the research on with the psychedelics i was surrounded by people with the great abuse in alcohol and drugs and i thought oh, well let's give a look at this information and suddenly i found myself experimenting myself i did microdosing with uh, a little bit of mushrooms i found myself truly renewed the theory uh, reliving a different uh, uh, a reality and i start seeing changes in people uh, after this experience i started the research which led to my book we may talk about this later and i returned to europe at age 47 so i'm 50 right now and as soon as i got back to europe there was something in the air i was in portugal i was really close to many people coming to me saying oh i heard about this microdosing experience this that and the other have you heard of ayahuasca I said, oh, this ayahuasca is a big name but i don't know much about it and a shaman approached me and he said i think you are in the right spot to try this kind of experience i jumped into it with that uh, traumatic uh, experience of losing my father at a very young age. So here I start with my very first ayahuasca. It was uh, 2018, and uh, I really wanted to reconnect with my father, show my father who I became, the person, uh, the adult uh, human being I became, and uh, just to reconnect, to see how are you doing, how's things, wherever you are. Um, I was told, uh, uh, sagely, I would say, from the director of the group, uh, that going into the world of the death uh, can bring both positive and negative energies. We all know now this. I uh, was not aware of that. It, it actually uh, raised a bit of concern in me. But she blessed me. She said, this is a strong intention you are carrying. I really wish for you to meet your father and he will protect you from the rest of the energy. It was a truly blessing from me. Ayahuasca first time is something hard to describe. We all try our way, but I would say that it's um, an absolute uh, blast. It's uh, uh, the joy of life coming on to you in a, in a diversity of uh, energies and faces and colors. And in the same time, is the deepest of the uh, darkest forest you can imagine. To me, was was both of them. Initially, just to be a little graphic, I danced a lot. I really was fully energetic. Within an hour or two, I was dancing like a crazy party goer, and I really shouted. My shaman, which is a friend of mine, Sergio, still remembers that. I was shouting, this party is for me. This is what I'm talking about. And (laughs) 15 minutes later, I was on the floor completely down to zero. I had to drag myself to the toilet. I had to start my cleaning process. 
and in that moment I met my father. I smelled his perfume, his aftershave. I started crying. I was really close to him. Sergio the shaman was outside of the toilet. He asked me to come out and I said, I am here with my father. I will speak with my father now. I've been there with him for more than an hour. Other people that I lost uh, during my childhood, uh, close friends from school, also appeared saying hello. Uh, I don't remember the content of the conversation, but I know for certainty in my reality, I spoke with my father. And then uh, after this hour of uh, great conversation or exchange, suddenly a question came to my mind. Wait a minute. If I am speaking with a dead person, am I alive or am I dead? This was uh, the nastiest question I could ask myself, and I completely lost it. I was in the plain plateau of the ayahuasca, probably three, four hours in the game, so top of the game. And I remember thinking, well, if uh, this is what Evan is like with my father, I choose to stay here. So I let go of my ego. I let go of uh, the idea of life. And as soon as I did that, I fell on the floor crying because I, I thought I was dead. And the, the light of life came back to me. The values of life, which is uh, when you're about to lose it, you're really going to love it. And this is uh, really the core of my experience, dear Matthew. That's incredible. I was getting <laughs> chills. <laughs> Chills midway through you talking about that. Um, what's what was the uh, what was the atmosphere like during your experience? Was it a large group of people that were all uh, communing together, or yeah, just you and uh, the shaman? I did skip the, the the details. I'm happy you asked because this is a very important part of the ceremonies. Of course, it was a group, small group. Uh, the group uh, of ayahuasqueros I work with, uh, they don't allow more than eight people at a time in very, very large spaces. We are talking uh, castle-like uh, uh, rooms. So really very high ceilings, very large uh, uh, concrete walls, natural walls, uh, and absolutely minimal, just candles and yoga mats for us with the buckets and everything. Really a majestic environment. Uh, the shaman, the group, let's say, it's, uh, was formed by psychotherapists. The director is a psychotherapist. Uh, Sergio is a Portuguese uh, neo-shaman, I would call him, uh, studying with the Shipibo uh, tribe in Peru. And uh, musicians and uh, medicine people of uh, serious quality. Uh, the, the group was about eight people, as I said. We, they, I pretty much became a catalyst during that uh, uh, experience. Uh, Sergio told me that and they allowed me to continue because I was carrying the energy of my uh, processing and it helped a lot many people starting the processing. Uh, they, I remember somebody following me dancing. Uh, I remember somebody uh, feeling the energy, the vibe close to them and it was a magnificent uh, setting, I would say. Magnificent. That's awesome. Do you do you happen to know where the medicine was from? Uh, yes, uh, Shipibo, Peru. Uh, it was uh, physically taken by Sergio and uh, uh, another girl from the group. They go and they support the community of the tribe directly. So they go, they create the medicine together. They uh, pay for the medicine for the construction and the, you know, say for the support of the community, and they return safely to Europe. That's awesome. It is. Um, Talk, talk to me about the uh, talk to me about the ikros or the the music. Ha! Ah, this was uh, the the the, <laughs> the most impressive part for me. Uh, they um, this group of people, and this is very important, I think, for everybody to understand, came from uh, a sort of a European franchise of ayahuasca, which is something I'm completely against, but um, unfortunately, it's very popular. Luckily they were just shifting away from this franchise, starting their own real Icaro scenario. So initially, they told me they start, they used uh, digital music. And for the first time, when I arrived for my first ayahuasca, we were working with the 
uh, real instruments. So we had the several instruments from the jungle, frog, snakes, uh, tiger sounds, uh, really with the, with wooden uh, tools, uh, flutes, uh, guitar. Uh, Sergio is also a great musician and a singer. Uh, he's now releasing plenty of music uh, on, uh, on worldwide. Uh, and mostly the care, what I noticed was that every process was pretty much followed singularly. They had the ability with a small group, of course, to go to get close to everyone and allow for each one to receive the sounds they require. This is very, very important. Yeah, that's very, I found that's very core to the Shipibo uh, sect is Correct. having that having that one on one. Correct. You're, as you just put it, you're receiving the sounds that you need and being able to move around the container and, and deliver that as, so true. as needed. That's always the, that's always the, the most amazing part to me after having a few sittings now under my belt is a, or, or first, I'm always impressed that the, you know, the facilitators are basically playing live music and it's, you know, one of them or, or all of them together, you know, but they're facilitating live music for the better part of eight hours yeah. <laughs> throughout the night, which is incredible. It's a lot. With, it's a lot. With the medicine. Uh -huh. And, and then, you know, second, I'm, I'm always just caught in such gratitude. I'm, you know, always like, wow, I'm here with in the most amazing concert ever, like front row seat to the most amazing concert of my life every time. <laughs> Good one. You know, and, yeah. And it just yeah. is so impactful to the the energies and, and the vibe of uh, the container and the process and, and the experience. And, you know, sometimes I've personally felt the kind of the unity with the vibrations in that you know, sometimes I feel like my breathing is in concert with the music. Correct. And, you know, sometimes I feel like my breathing is leading the, the vibrations. The actual sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's going up, the going same. down, and yeah, I feel it, I feel the same. I was also lucky enough that in the future I had uh, several uh, ceremony about twenty five or thirty ayahuasca ever since. And uh, getting closer to Sergio, I started also facilitating because the medicine was asking me to actually go there, and they understood that uh, the 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 feeding of the medicine telling me now it's time for you to serve the others is absolutely magical either way you want to do it bring in some water uh, a touch of a hand uh, a whistle in the ear some breath uh, on the, on the head of somebody is just magical i totally resound with what you just said there is a synergy between our own uh, self energy and the one that comes from the icaros and the atmosphere within the the ceremony magical have you uh, have you had any encounters with your father or with your dad in uh, since the first ceremony uh, absolutely so i am uh, i am grateful and very lucky i think because i work uh, uh, mostly now with the changa which i produce on my own and uh, uh, that allows me to get back to the plateau pretty much immediately i saw my mother which uh, who i lost uh, when i was 24 and I connect with my father very, very f uh, often. So there is now a, a true connection uh, in, in a sense of energy and a place old also. I get to the same place all the time, colors and smells, and uh, the, the, the actual plateau is the same all the time for me. And from there, I can explore and uh, uh, navigate uh, whoever, uh, I, wherever I want. It's absolutely magical, many times. Are there any... Are there any common themes, or I call them common threads of the fabric of the medicine that you experience? Like, is there something I, that just shows up, you know, every every time, you know, or most times, just kind of a common theme that you find? Uh, yeah, I thank you for the question. This brings me back to the to the core of this plateau. Yes, I I have a sense. It's very hard to describe, but I have a sense of. Uh, protection from a specific uh, spiritual uh, tribe. So uh, I hear in my mind somebody telling me, you are part of this tribe, you are protected, so please don't worry. There are also colors, they often return, they're always the same. It's the Bordeaux color, which is in, uh, in English, I don't remember. It's the dark brown, 
uh, with um, a green and white inside. It, it, these are uh, uh, plumes that are on top of me and the voice of the tribe that tells me, please proceed. You are uh, uh, protected by us. You belong with us. And it's absolutely <laughs> magical, <laughs> undescribable. Yeah. I've <clears throat> I've found that the and I and and you mentioned it earlier. You said as soon as you experience that feeling of letting go, everything just escalated, you know, immensely. And I I find True. that to be the one very very core common thread of the medicine with with everybody and and specifically with myself that you know my my intention now has become continuously a very you know a very core same intention and it's always to practice the art of letting go and the Correct. art of surrender whatever that might look like and Correct. i i say it's a practice because at least for me that's part of the integration is i there are moments in like almost every day and moments where you're, you know, the, the human struggle comes into play. You know, you're holding on tightly to, to something, to some notion or some reality and, and you can't control it. And the only thing to do is to practice letting go and watch yeah. what happens when, when you let go. And so during ceremony and with the medicine, it's, I find it's always, like I call it the medicines toying with me. The medicine's like, <laughs> it, the medicine likes that dance. It's, you know, yeah. it wants you to hold on as tightly as you can until you realize that moment of, I can't hold on anymore. I need to let go. And then she says, perfect. Let's, let's go now. Let's go. You know, let's go. On the ride. Yeah. I totally agree and resonate with that. It's something that I really focus when uh, I have my psychedelic classes, allowing people to understand that is so very important. And I applaud you for the practice because it's dedication it's really a discipline uh, that we need to learn to do i was probably lucky because my my first ayahuasca i really i was thought when you have nothing to lose because you really don't give a shit just to say it as it is so i blasted into it i know now that even in the worst moment of fear uh, i am actually in a safe place